Welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we're going to go back to the very basics in Procreate and start looking at brushes and some of my favorite brushes that I use a lot and what they do and how you can get started just messing around with Procreate brushes. Let's get started. Okay, it's been a while since I did a video, um, but I've moved and we are getting all settled and I got my iPad studio back working here. So I wanted to make a video um, about the different brushes that I love in Procreate. So it's fun to explore with the different brushes, and let's go up here and see what the recent brushes that I've been using. Um, so the star shows all the recent brushes I've been using, and Syrup is one of my go-tos. All of these brushes that I use came with the Procreate app. Um, so the Syrup one is kind of like a calligraphy brush, and I really like how smooth that is. Let's check that out. So this is nice if you want to get small lines and combine it with thick lines like a ribbon. And then you can also, you know, use it for lettering. Uh, one of the important things to do when you're going to use the brush is click on it and then come over here to stabilization and change the stabilization amount. It'll probably be way down here and so you want to bump it up and that means when you actually use the brush it will be smooth like this. I'll show you what it looks like without being stabilized. So you can see kind of the jiggy jacks of the curves here uh, where things aren't very nice. And now we'll zoom in after we do the stabilized version. So all the curves are a lot cleaner and not jiggity. Jiggity jiggity. So that's one of my favorite brushes is Syrup. Technical pen is nice, so this is kind of nice because I need to change the stabilization on that one. The technical pen is nice because it gets smaller, so that's the largest size, and here's the smallest size. So you can really use the technical pen for a lot of details, and you have a lot of range on brush thickness. So that's what the technical pen does, and that's how it looks. Uh, soft brush. That is basically airbrush, and you can cover your whole page pretty much on the biggest setting. Um, and then on the smallest setting, you can see you can go really tiny with your airbrush, or you can get bigger with it. find a little bit of in between. So that's airbrush. HB pencil. This is what I use a lot of my mock-ups. Um, I love all the pencils but the HB pencil is like the most, I don't know, even in real pencil world that's my favorite pencil. So you can go fat with your shading if you hold your pen down. And if you hold your pen up more, it's more fine-tuned, so you can see the difference there. So fat kind of does a shading like that, and up and down does kind of more like a small pencil. So it might help to do stabilization on that one. Yeah, that's nicer. So this is a new iPad and I haven't gone through each brush and stabilized everything, but you can see the difference between these little curly cues and these curly cues here. They're a lot nicer. All right, um, I don't know how to say this one, but I, I say Freysinet, but I don't even really refer to it, you know, I just use it. Um, I like this one because it feels more artsy um, and when you can draw like with different textures and stuff. 
so you know you can keep it little and it looks kind of like a pixelated paint and then you can get bigger and you can make different shapes and shading but I really like the artistic vibe of that one and then Pandani is kind of like that but more smooth so let's change the stabilization on that one So it has like a little bit of a rougher edge, but the interior is more smooth. So that's pretty creative looking and fun. And monoline. Monoline is just that. It's monoline. This is the, the tiniest monoline right here. And then we have the fattest monoline right here but the consistency of the thickness of the line stays the same. So that's why monoline can be a good choice to do. Maybe if you're drawing clip art or wanting something where your line is consistently the same thickness, monoline's a good one. Light pen and flare. So light pen's not on here because I guess I ran out of room, but flare's awesome. We're gonna go get light pen because that's usually in my favorites. Now for that one I'm going to make the background dark and then I'm going to pick a, let me check the stabilization here, and I'm going to pick a bright color which is awesome with light pen. So that really is like fun, it's kind of LED looking. The other cool thing about light pen is doing some mandalas. We'll finish out on that one. So to do some mandalas with the light pen um, you want to do the drawing assist under here in, under canvas. Click uh, edit drawing guide, symmetry, options, radial. And then I'm going to change the guidelines to be that color so I can see them. Alright so now you can see What's going to happen here when I think I'm actually going to go get light brush. That one's a little bit different. And I'm going to change this to a bright green color. So then you can just start doing a mandala. Um, let me go fix the stabilization. So one thing about your brushes and your pen, when you hold your pen down, so when you draw a line, we'll do this again, when you draw a line and you keep the pen on the tablet, it keeps going, but if you stop, then it will straighten itself out, and if it's more of a curve, then it will smooth the curve out, but if it's less of a curve, then it will make it a straight line. So we'll do that example here. So you can see it kind of did a little funky thing there, which can be fun. You can just kind of play with it and see if any of it works, you know, for where you would want it to go. That's kind of cool looking. But mandalas are fun and you can just, you know, be creative with it without having to like have an end goal in mind. But it's fun to just kind of like learn about your brushes and make pretty, you could do patterns with this, you could do all kinds of stuff with that. So light brush, that's one of my favorites. So that's a few of my favorite brushes. I hope that was helpful for y'all. Go explore and play and have fun and we'll see you on the next one. If that video was helpful for you, I hope you'll consider liking and subscribing to the channel and uh, I'm gonna be posting more videos that are basic Procreate overviews and tutorials. So uh, make sure you hit that bell for notifications and we'll see you on the next one.